What does the future look like for our children? It is estimated that 65% of the children entering kindergarten today will ultimately end up in new jobs that don't even exist today. As educators, how do we prepare these children for a future we can't even imagine yet? My name is Zia Akhtar Abbas and I'm part of the senior team at the Citizens Foundation. Despite a journey of 25 years and more than a quarter of a million children enrolled in our schools today, when we at TCF looked at this challenge posed by our uncertain future, we felt that we had to start with a blank sheet of paper and we had to start early. We felt that the answer had to be in building some of the critical skills that will allow children to learn and thrive no matter what the future holds for them. Creativity, confidence, critical thinking and cognitive skills, a sense of community and the ability to be mindful and resilient. The early years are critical for the development of these skills. Millions of neural connections are being formed every minute and we start seeing variations in the development of language skills as early as 18 months, depending upon the child's immediate environment. So in 2017, we put together a team of bright, young, passionate educators and gave them a brand new school to reimagine and use as a lab to develop these multiple intelligences amongst their youngest students. Their only boundary conditions were that they had to stay within our current cost dynamics, the model had to be scalable, and it had to be relevant to the local context. Today, I will share with you a glimpse of the remarkable school this team established, something that is now shaping the transformation of early years education across all TCS schools over the next few years. The first thing the team changed was the physical space to make it flexible, comfortable, and inviting. There was more color in the classrooms. Children were provided resources at their own level to encourage autonomy and self-regulation. We implemented choice time for students. Play is a fundamental way children learn about social interaction, critical thinking and self-regulation. But the mindset and resources needed to implement play-based learning in classrooms are very different from conventional practice. And of course, this required a lot of training for our teachers. Well, it was well worth all the effort. It was amazing to see the level of engagement and exploration in the room. Kids were gravitating towards the activities they were more fascinated by and engaging with the material and with other children in new ways. Boys were gravitating towards the kitchen sets and girls were finding themselves in leadership roles. The team also established a practice of joyful social reading every day. Stories are such a powerful way to develop the child's imagination and their view of the world. We found a dearth of meaningful and contextualized stories in Urdu in the market. So the team developed over a hundred original storybooks to bridge this gap for engaging children's content in Urdu. In the early years, we used thematic activities to introduce concepts in science and social studies. Snack time sees everyone in the class sharing the meals they have brought from home learning about nutrition and about cleanliness. Exercise time introduced the children to yoga and exercise, as well as developing mindfulness as a habit. And we also set aside time for students to build community by sharing their experiences and developing a daily practice of talking about empathy and gratitude. To assess how children were developing through these months and years, teachers used the development of individual portfolios and observational records rather than tests and quantitative records. I went to visit the lab school to try and get a sense for myself of how these children are doing. As I entered the grade one classroom, they were in the middle of choice time and this girl walked up to meet me and asked me if she could read me a story. I could barely manage a mumbled yes and a nod and she was on her way. It wasn't that she had rehearsed the story to perfection, but even when she stumbled, she would smile or shake her head, comfortable in the knowledge that it was okay to be wrong sometimes. This is Shahir. He was in a class making paper planes. When I stopped to tell him what a wonderful plane he had made, he quickly ran away to fetch another girl, his classmate, who actually makes the best paper planes in the class. He went on to praise her planes while she quietly blushed. 
we may not be able to imagine what the future will be like. But if children like these have a hand in shaping that future, then we can imagine a world where we are comfortable with ourselves and kinder to each other. Perhaps this is one way to shape the future. One amazing child at a time.